In this video, we're going to go through all the Edo calculus around the stochastic dynamics of actually creating a modified unstein ullenbeck process for modeling temperature data. This is for the final use of actually using this model to price temperature and exotic options. So without further ado, if you're interested in weather derivatives and you would like to learn more about Edo calculus in general, let's dive into it. So the first part of this is going to be the math and then we're going to actually use Python and fit some of these coefficients. So first off, the cyclic nature of temperature time series justifies the use of a mean reverting process in its modeling of its dynamic. So many people have actually modeled this as an ETO process, as a continuous stochastic process with a mean reversion property, and that can be the ornstein ulbeck process. So these following papers have looked at how you can implement this. Now, why would you not implement a normal mean reverting ornstein ulbeck process? So here is our general OU process, and here we've got our change in temperature dynamics equal to a mean reversion parameter K um, with our long-term uh, average temperature, and that is constantly changing, minus the temperature that we're currently at now, and that's all our drift component plus some volatility component that is time dependent. So this is a normal mean reverting ornstein ullenbeck process, maybe bar the dynamics here of our uh, changing temperature and then our changing average temperature and then our changing volatility. The first point to note is that to actually capture the full mean reverting dynamics of the temperature, it's so important to have an expectation of the temperature that's equal to the average temperature. So now we're going to explain that while using the normal mean reverting ornstein ullenbeck process, and if this was constant volatility over time, you might call this the Versailles model for interest rates, um, but essentially we're going to go through why this is not the best choice for temperature. So to prove this, we're going to use Edo calculus, and more specifically, we're going to use the Edo Doblin formula. Now the Edo Doblin formula here is written in differential form, and this is where we have uh, our dynamics of a given function f, where x is an Edo process. And that can be explained as the partial derivative of this function with respect to t, dt, plus the partial different, uh, derivative with respect to x, so our Edo process, dx, plus a half, um, and then the uh, second partial differential with respect to x, um, dx, dx. So this is the Eden Doble and formula. If you want to look for proofs, I can do a video on that, but um, I'm guessing not a lot of people are interested in pure Eto calculus and more interested in the application. So without further ado, let's get into the application. The hard part here, and for our model in general, is going to be about choosing this function. So we're going to follow a similar methodology as solving the Cox Ingersoll and Ross uh, interest rate model, so the CIR model. So we're going to choose an exponential function with our mean reverting parameter um, with respect to time, times by our Edo process. Now, this choice may seem random, but really it's not. The main reason we're choosing this is because when we solve a normal or Riemann integral, non-stochastic integral, um, by the integra integrating factor method, we end up with a choice that's best suited as the exponential of the integral of whatever's in front of our uh, Y process dynamics. Now that's uh, therefore our integrating factor method being applied here, multiplied by our ETO process. So it is a logical choice. Our partial derivative in, with respect to t ends up with this function here, partial derivative with respect to x, and then our second order partial uh, differential um, gets zero. So now that we've actually found out these functions, we can plug them into the Edo Doblin formula, and then we're gonna start subbing in our Edo process. So our SDE specifically. So now we're going to apply this Edo Doblin formula with that function that we've just specified to our Edo process on temperature with our dynamics of DT temperature as described by our mean reverting SDE that we had before. So now I've just plotted out the actual dynamics of our function e to the kt um, t multiplied by t is going to be equal to the Edo Doblin formula. And now you'll notice that here, instead of x for the Edo process, I've placed the temperature uh, t 
and the dynamics t um, with respect to that x variable. So once we substitute in what those um, functional partial de derivatives were, we end up with a zero in this second order term here, so that cancels. And then we're left with the following drift term, and then um, e, our integrating factor um, multiplied by our original dt dynamics as described by that SDE. So if we then substitute in the dt dynamics, what we get is our drift term of the SDE. Um, so we've subbed it in the dt dynamics there. We get our drift term multiplied by that integrating factor plus the uh, integrating factor multiplied by the diffusion terms. We can now cross um, cross out cancelling terms. So here we identify that this part of the drift term of, of temperature um, can actually be crossed out with this drift term that we had from our Edo Doblin formula. So we can cross that out. And essentially we get left with one single drift term um, with respect to that average temperature plus our diffusion term multiplied by that um, integrating factor there. So now what we're going to do is take the integral over a given unit of time. Our interval is going to be from s to t, where t is greater than s, absolutely. So here we get on the left hand side, we're going to take the integral of um, this dynamics of this equation, and what you get is um, our two components here over those two different times. So we've got e to the power of kt um, times t t and then we've got minus e to the k uh, kappa s uh, t s equals our integrals over our deterministic uh, or our drift and then our diffusion based uh, terms. So once we take the integral essentially we're going to take um, our uh, terms um, with s so uh, with time uh, smaller to the right hand side and then we're going to change the base of the Riemann integral to d hat t. Now we also going to divide through by our coefficient there on the left hand side, our integrating factor, and note there that it is a t. So now we have the solution to our temperature um, SDE. However, we can actually simplify this a little bit further. So we can actually take this integral over this domain and then we can group like terms. So we end up with our final temperature um, solution being this. And what we'll actually know, the big issue is that the expectation is not the long run average temperature. So how do we determine here this? This is our final solution for temperature under a normal mean reverting OU dynamics. But when we have the Ito integral, the expectation of an Ito integral is equal to zero. Um, so we arrive at the expectation equal to this stuff here. And we can see clearly that that is not uh, T hat, which is our average in our daily average temperature series. So this happens because the mean process of the equation is reverting to hat T, but this is not constant over time. This changes from one time step to another. So remember in the last video, if you haven't watched it, I'll link it up in the description above, then we have a observed autocorrelation in the error terms. So here's our fitted model of that temperature hat. And essentially what we have is our model in terms of a linear component and then a seasonal component. The seasonal component was captured with just a sine function. Now we observed in the residuals here are the residuals here, but we've noticed partial autocorrelation with one lag. And essentially this is no coincidence because as it happens, when we add this AR1 term for changes in the seasonally adjusted mean, so this D hat T, this change in the uh, seasonally adjusted mean, this is going to adjust the drift um, in the long run to the actual mean of hat T. Essentially, our solution can be solved by adding this the change in the seasonally adjusted means to our actual SDE dynamics. So original work first published by Doner and Quarrell. Sorry if I butchered those names. But essentially, by adding this new dynamics to our drift term, we can account um, for this change and that this solution of the dynamics leads to an expectation of temperature, which is equal to our uh, average temperature as we've defined in the seasonal mean. So essentially we could use the Edo Doblin formula again, but it turns out 
that we can actually solve this SDE using a traditional integrating factor method and multiplying through by this integrating factor. Note that we cannot handle this for the stochastic component, but we're just gonna consider the drift term for a second here. So all we do is we're going to multiply through um, that integrating factor into our SDE as we have there, and we're gonna separate out the parts. What we'll notice is that this combination here is actually the product of the differential. And what I mean by that, it is the dynamics of um, the integrating factor multiplied by our uh, temperature hat minus temperature at that time. And that's equal to our variance, our diffusion component. So to prove that the expectation is equal to zero, if we consider this new ETO process then in terms of this dynamics here of our, uh, our product between our integrating factor and this term here, then the dynamics are as the equation above. Essentially, we can just call the dynamics of ZT, which is equal to the dynamics of the formula that we have here. So if we change that to an Ito integral form, we end up with the following dynamic, ZT equals Z0 uh, minus our diffusion component. Now, if we substitute in what our ZT definition was, and then we um, use the fact that at, temp at our initial conditions at temperature zero equals the average temperature zero, well, then we end up with the following. Substituting in for both time periods at time zero and time T, we end up with that. So now if we rearrange, so this cancels, and this component cancels out here because the initial conditions are that they're equal and then we can uh, take this component, this exponential divide through to the other side, and then uh, subtract our uh, hat, temperature hat, our average. And essentially by rearranging, you end up with the following solution here, where our temperature um, is equal to our average temperature plus a variance process. And of course, the expectation of this Edo process is then equal to uh, the average temperature. And the, the reason is, again, because this Edo integral, the expectation is zero. So now we're gonna consider the modified ornstein ullenbeck process. So the dynamics, as we've just described, we're very convinced that the expectation of this new stochastic process is equal to the long run average of this daily average temperature time series. So here's our model. Um, and here we're going to uh, describe our changing average of this daily average temperature. So our hat uh, T is actually equal to a equation that we worked out in our previous video. So this is how we modeled our time series in terms of a trend and then our seasonal components with our estimated parameters. So one of the parameters that we haven't um, actually estimated yet within our ornstein ullenbeck process is our uh, speed of mean reversion, so our kappa. Here in the chart, we can see that now, if I take away that, uh, that deterministic seasonal mean component, that uh, hat T away from our uh, daily average uh, temperature series, we end up with these residuals. And essentially, I need to fit a process to this. Now, one clue that we can see here is that, again, as we noted in our previous video, that the partial autocorrelation function shows that there is a correlation with the first order lag. So that should be a hint, but we'll do the Euler discretization of our SDE over the intervals between I minus one and I. So by completing the Euler discretization, we get uh, temperature I minus uh, TI minus one equals the average temperature I minus average temperature I minus one plus our kappa um, and multiplied by this term here of our previous average temperature minus our uh, temperature that we observed beforehand, plus um, a uh, volatility um, based on our current position multiplied by Zi. And here that is just normally distributed um, with standard deviation equal to one. If I now rearrange this equation, so I take each of the individual time series, and with respect to the time period that I'm in currently, I subtract away our average daily temperature, then that should remind you of our detrended and removed seasonality 
um, time series that we had modeled previously that we observed the one lag in. And essentially what we're gonna denote that is, is just our uh, T hat component. It's getting, so it's confusing with the notation, but essentially um, our time series where we had the residuals before um, with our time series that has just been detrended and then seasonality removed is now going to be called uh, T uh, hat. And instead of it being a bar, it, it is now a hat. So if we simplify it enough, then we can actually model this as an autoregressive model uh, with one lag term. So essentially here, our, uh, ca our kappa is equal to one minus gamma, where our gamma is going to be the coefficient that we fit uh, this AR model process to. So now estimating that speed of mean reversion, all we need to do is fit this uh, autoregressive model with one lag series. Here, we're going to use uh, the stats models module from Python to do this. And essentially we end up with a coefficient of 0.56 for our gamma, and therefore our kappa is 0.438 or thereabouts. So now our modified um, ornstein ullenbeck dynamics with estimated parameters in total, we have the daily average temperature dynamics, we've defined that in the equation we have the changing average daily average temperature for oh, that's a mouthful so our, our uh, bar t our hat t um, which is equal to our trend component and then our seasonal component we also have um, a complete equation for the first derivative of that average daily average temperature um, which is uh, this component here um, because we can just derive this with respect to time and essentially we just end up um, with one less term which drops out and our sign turns to a cos function. My question to you is what's missing and what haven't we actually done yet? Well, essentially it's this term here. It's our sigma, it's our volatility that we haven't considered. Now, the dynamics of temperature volatility, as you can see, even just in this graph, our variance is not the same between periods. I can see here that towards the ends of the years or the starts of the years, we have massive volatility or changes in temperatures in our residuals. And the reason that is occurring is because that's summer. So potentially, um, volatility is not constant throughout uh, the different seasons. So if we actually look at each individual day over those 160 years and we measure the volatility, um, standard deviation as a uh, way of looking at the volatility or volatility as we have in the orange there where the volatility is just the percentage of that standard deviation with respect to our mean, well then you get something that looks like this. And you can see that depending on the time of year, um, volatility does in fact change. Now we could model this in a number of ways. We're gonna look at how to model it. So in the next video, we're gonna learn how to model it with Fourier series, parametric regression, so potentially a polynomial. We'll look at local and non-parametric regression, so splines, and then how we can actually estimate this, potentially looking at just months with piecewise non-constant functions. So potentially individual seasons or individual months. The last, the last way to model it is actually by coming up with another einstein ullenbeck uh, mean reverting process, but for this time it's going to be volatility. So then we would have two stochastic differential equations. Once we've actually defined what that volatility model is in any one of these ways, then you can go ahead and then using your risk neutral pricing framework of these dynamics, so with respect to a market price of risk, you can then go ahead and price uh, temperature options uh, using these dynamics that we've defined. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and look for the next video if you're interested in following on with this series.